Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. New charges in a chilling case. The Farmington Hills doctor accused of abusing kids during physical exams, and there are fears there could be many more victims. That doctor, V. Leverin, did a number of physicals for hockey teams here in Michigan, as well as in other states. He now faces 10 new charges of criminal sexual conduct, including second and third and fourth degree counts. And the investigation is far from over with tip calls coming in from six states and Canada. Jacqueline Francis is live tonight and Jacqueline, this case just keeps growing. That's right. Since this case was first made public last month, 33 additional tips came in reporting similar suspicions or behavior all involving the same doctor. Investigators now fearing there could be even more potential victims out there. Oakland County officials are bringing attention to the troubling sexual abuse case involving longtime hockey doctor V. Leverin. Since this began, we have been inundated with contacts and tips and some really alarming data that makes us concerned about a lot more potential survivors. The urologist was first arrested last month after a 19 year old male accused the doctor of sexually assaulting him during a medical examination at his home office. That initial case opening the floodgates. Several new allegations of sexual abuse stemming from the from medical examinations at his home office in Farmington Hills, as well as other locations in and outside of Michigan, where he treated patients were brought forward by survivors. Police say since the investigation became public, they have received 33 additional tips that are being investigated all over Metro Detroit. Tips also came from individuals out of state and in Canada. Officials say Leverin worked with young hockey players for 20 years, expressing concern that there are likely more victims that have yet to come forward. There are particular challenges with male uh, victims and survivors of sexual assault. And he, um, his, the, this individual's main contact with uh, kids or adults was through hockey. Dr. Leverin remains behind bars at last check. There is a tip line out there for anyone with information to call. That's 248-871-2610. We have that on our website as well. Coming up at six, we're digging into the unique challenges facing investigators on this case. All right, Jack, and we'll see you at 6 o'clock. For more than a decade, it has been a shameful chapter for the city. Back in 2009, 11,341 untested rape kits were discovered in a Detroit police storage facility, and the story quickly gained national exposure. Well, today, 4,748 days later, every single one of those kits have finally been tested. Rod Maloney live on this story for us tonight. Rod, this is a significant milestone. Well, it is, and it's also a way to sort of close the book on all of this. And if you take a look at the, the rape kits, so far they've got 239 convictions out of these cases. They say they found 841 serial offenders. And so as a way to try and sort of get those numbers to even out a little bit more, Kim Worthy says she's going to make one last effort to find more victims. We want to feel comfortable at the end of the day that when we, that when we, get, to the, when we get to the place where we're going to close cases out, that we have done before we do that, that we've done everything that we can. And again, that's one of the main reasons for this, that we've done everything we can before we might one day have to close some of these cases out. More than 11,000 DNA kits finally all tested. This troubling rape kit situation that made national headlines may be nearing its end, especially now that the victims are getting up there in age. Or maybe women that are 45 to 60 now uh, were obviously much younger when it occurred to them, and we still want to try to reach as many as we can. Worthy's had several iterations of programs attempting to get victims to come forward. And now you're going to see an all out blitz in nail salons, barber shops, on buses, on billboards, on the radio, even telling them they ought to come forward. We are still prosecuting cases where there were CODIS or DNA hits. Uh, we also have a lot of cases where there were no hits, but we still think that we can prosecute those cases as well. The cases already prosecuted stretch over 40 states, and there are cases where the prosecutor's office says they know who the alleged attacker is, but don't know where the victim went. Looking to locate survivors who may want to come forward and may not have had a mechanism to do so. We basically want them to know that their case still matters. We are still willing to try to bring them justice. 
One of the other things that Kim Worthy says she wants to do is to get help for people, help that is free of charge in case they need coping with the uh, the rape that they have survived in, in years past. And she says you can certainly do that by contacting the office. Back to you. Yeah, how, how can they, considering the outreach here, how can victims contact the prosecutor's mm -hmm. office, Rod? Well, here's the thing, Kim. There is a website that they have opened up for this. You can actually go on there and report. There is a phone number you can call, and you can get the, during the day, 830 to 430. But if you get somebody at night, it's a confidential line specifically for this. You can leave a message, and you will hear back from investigators. We put all that information on clickondetroit.com. Yeah. All right. Rod, thanks. Hours after former President Trump launched his re-election bid, the focus in Washington remains on Capitol Hill and the fallout from last week's historic midterms. Despite losses by Republican candidates, which many blame on the former president's influence, the GOP is set to win control of the House. Alice Barr with more from Washington. Alice. Good evening. As we're beginning to get a picture of who will hold party leadership roles and help determine what bills come up for a vote in the next Congress, Democrats are hoping to use the rest of this year to squeeze through some of their remaining priorities. Does the gentleman from Republicans today preparing to take control of the House of Representatives with a narrow majority now all but assured. But the GOP gains fall far short of expectations. And with Democrats maintaining control of the Senate, party leaders in both chambers are facing challenges for their top roles. Senator Rick Scott today losing a bid to replace Mitch McConnell, who secured his post as the Senate's longest serving Republican leader after brushing off blame for the the GOP's midterm performance among moderates and independents. Who looked at us and concluded too much chaos, too much negativity, and we turned off a lot of these centrist voters. The party's most prominent leader, former President Trump, kicked off his third presidential run last night. America's comeback starts right yes. now. But the former president is politically vulnerable, with several of the candidates he backed losing their midterm bids and potential rivals jockeying for position, including former Vice President Mike Pence. The president's entitled to announce his intentions uh, whenever he desires, but uh, I honestly believe uh, that uh, we'll have better choices come 2024. As the 2022 results settle in, both parties preparing for the challenges of a divided government. Before the new Congress starts in January, Democrats hoping to pass a few key priorities. The Senate today tackling a bill to codify the right to same-sex marriage, which polls show a majority of Americans support. Senate Democrats optimistic they'll gain enough Republican backing to pass the bill. That bill to make same-sex marriage federal law does include religious freedom protections. And in a sign of its broad support, the Latter-day Saints Mormon Church has put out a statement calling it the way forward. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4.